Nearly 2,000 U.S. colleges and universities have adopted the trend of making the SAT and ACT optional for admission. Now one Ivy League school is saying it's jumping off that train. Dartmouth is becoming one of the first high-profile schools in the nation and the first among the Ivies to return to the testing requirements. Since the pandemic, the number of schools ditching the standardized test has jumped to more than 1,900, with over 80% of four-year schools no longer requiring them, according to InsideHigherEd.com. The move away from the test had already begun prior to the spread of COVID over concerns of inequities for students in historically marginalized communities. With testing centers closed during the health crisis, the number of schools scrapping the SAT and ACT surged. Dartmouth, like many other schools, suspended ACT and SAT assessments in June of 2020 during the height of COVID-19. University officials said at the time the test optional policy was a short-term practice rather than an indefinite policy. Well, now some schools like Dartmouth are bringing back their pre-COVID requirements, citing research showing the test better forecast how a student will do in his or her first year of college. Dartmouth researchers say the data shows standardized test scores are highly predictive of academic achievement at Dartmouth and that GPA and SAT scores maintain a linear relationship. However, not everyone in academia agrees. The entire University of California system does not consider the tests when reviewing applicants over concerns of racial bias. In a 2021 settlement, the state agreed to end the use of test scores in order to broaden access for minorities and students with disabilities. The lawsuit alleged using the ACT and SAT for admissions discriminates against applicants on the basis of their race, wealth, and disability. On top of racial discrimination concerns, research by the University of Chicago argues standardized testing is obsolete. The authors of the study contend standardized exam scores are weak indicators of graduation and that course grades are more critical indicators of academic performance. Despite criticism of standardized testing, the Wall Street Journal reports 17 states have elected to use either the ACT or SAT to meet high school testing requirements to comply with federal law. The New York Times reports some university administrators are wondering if ditching the test was a mistake. And while more high school teachers are handing out better grades, it's not translating to better SAT scores. It's a problem known as grade inflation. Officials with the College Board, which administers the SAT, said from 1998 to 2016, the proportion of high school seniors graduating with an A average grew by more than 8%, while SAT scores fell by 24 points. And the ACT found from 2010 to 2021, GPAs for high school seniors increased from 3.17 to 3.36, with the greatest inflation between 2018 and 2021. At the same time, ACT scores have remained stagnant or fallen. After suspending ACT and SAT in 2020 and 2021, MIT brought back its standardized testing requirements for first year and transfer students. The Dean of Admissions at MIT said, just getting A's is not enough information for us to know whether the students are going to succeed or not.